so good morning everyone and very warm welcome to fellows teaching module and in today's teaching module as you all know we are we have very eminent uh, faculty and speaker and very good friend of mine uh, dr taral nagda uh, he doesn't need any introduction uh, and he has phenomenal work in uh, yield perfis i have attended his uh, talks previously and uh, and that's why i have uh, chose taral to deliver this subject to all of you uh, very well warm welcome taral to fellows teaching module i will uh, request gaurav to take over and uh, run the show now gaurav please yes so good morning everyone so we all know dr taral and dr taral as sir said does not need any introduction so without wasting much time i would invite sir to deliver his talk on perthes disease salvage surgeries after healed perthes disease so please recording yes. uh, yes, somebody yes, yeah, yeah. i would request everybody else to please mute their mic noro is this my screen see yes yes sir yes sir all right all right so let's start uh, so this talk uh, follows uh, hitesh's talk uh, a lot of work which has been done from manipal on treating perthes disease and uh, i'm just going to uh, sort of go on to some of the concepts which are not book concepts but some concepts uh, which i have learned along the way so it's practical way of uh, looking at perthes disease and today what we are going to so we'll discuss uh, through this talk and the cases which are going to be presented is to uh, you know unfold this enigma uh, about how to manage sequelae of perthes disease and uh, controversial topic a lot of ways to manage it the literature about uh, perthes disease is very hazy and i hope this talk throw some clarity um, into into this so i'm going to go through some of uh, the sort of uh, myths about perthes disease first is there is no treatment of perthes disease you can't treat perthes at all there is no way you're going to revascularize the head uh, there is no uh, uh, documented uh, ways to do that and all the time we are doing is either to prevent a sequel or treat a sequel okay and uh, what happens in perthes is multiple stages of ischemia so it's not one episode of ischemia multiple episodes of ischemia which uh, you know break down the structure of the femoral head capital femoral epiphysis causes it to collapse and then extrude makes it deform and then on this deformed head because of constant mo motion of the body you will have uh, irregularity forming anterior and lateral bumps and then finally later on it gives rise to pain stiffness and later on degenerative arthritis so this is what we want to prevent and treat and uh, a lot of people feel that if you treat perthes conservatively uh, uh, it will do well in long term but this is what is from literature that 50% of perthes will develop degenerative disease by 60k now even if you do a femoral or vestibular containment surgery you can get down this number to 25 or 30% but you cannot say that by treating perthes disease you're going to make each and every head spherical and each and every person completely pain free so that it doesn't require a thr now it has been also found that people who are more severely involved meaning herring c or catral uh, 4 or thompson sorter b these are the ones which can have early hip dis disability and this can occur as early as second or third decade of life which are the productive years of life and uh, another myth is children below 8 years always will do well this is also a myth almost one third of these can have a severe disease and they also need to be looked into so we are you know uh, going to deal with a large population of sequelae of disease and uh, uh, um, another myth is to operate or contain only if the hip extrudes and what hap is happening here is a deformed head you are treating but you are not preventing a deformation and that's why you know this concept from 
manipal of doing early hipa containment which to which uh, it has taken through sphericity at maturity is important and it's equivalent to good results and uh, our aim is to get toolbug 1 2 or 3 and sequel develop if you have 4 and 5 so this is the domain which we are going to talk about uh, uh toolbug 4 and 5 and i'm sure somebody has covered this uh, classification earlier so we need to have sphericity of head for a good long term result and uh, uh, of course we have to pick and choose so we have cases which will develop spherical heads on their own and then those who cannot change shape without containment and we should be treating with containment only those uh, who cannot develop spherical heads on their own and if we operate there will be a change in natural history so these are again confusions and controversies in perfis this is as to how do we choose these cases okay so with this uh, we come to again the stages of perfis this is and uh, you know we know that we have stage of ischemia and then revascularization and reossification and then uh, stage of remodeling so 3 and 4 is the area which falls in the purview of sequelae and treating sequelae where a containment surgery will not work and uh, we have to do a salvage procedure for example and and the reason is the head is soft in the stage of ischemia and revascularization so containment will work it can reshape a deformed femoral head into a spherical head but in the stage of revascularization and remodeling uh, this will not work and we really need to do some other procedures which i am going to talk about so in stage of ischemia the treatment is conserved this is just to sort of summarize the treatment of perthes this is in stage 2a and b is to contain some people will also contain in stage 1b and uh, stage 3a and b is to cover and stage 4 is to salvage so these are the sequelae we are looking at uh, coxa magna is one of the sequelae uh, i would just ask fellows if they can go to the chat box and type what are the different types of sequelae you know you can get from perthes this is so coxa magna is one of the sequelae so i would request everyone just type one sequelae or keep on typing till the time we exhaust all the sequelae of perthes this is yeah i am looking at the chat box and yeah coxa vara molin absolutely right coxa breva coxa irregularis absolutely right and coxa breva could be a true coxa breva there is also retro version which has been described anything else there can be subluxation of uh, the femoral head and uh, so there can be hinge flexion and hinge abduction restriction of movement shortening bicapartmental acetabulum absolutely right molin so hinge abduction which not only affects the femoral side can also affect the acetabular side trochanteric overgrowth so coxa vara with trochanteric overgrowth in combination gives rise to a very bad lurch coxa breva gives rise to shortening so these are the sequelae uh, and i also want to clarify about the concept of hinge abduction here so the concept of hinge abduction is that if there is a large femoral head but if the center of rotation of the femoral head uh, is at the center of femur then the femur rotates around its center and on abduction uh, the there will be no medial gap but when you have hinge abduction because of irregular uh, femoral head instead of the center of hip being the rotation the center of rotation uh, actually comes onto the lateral edge of the acetabulum and when that happens uh, you get hinge abduction i'm not able to use my annotation i know it okay that's fine okay so that's why it's necessary to differentiate between the two types a coxa magna where the abduction is good and you don't get a medial uh, opening and uh, on abduction this femoral head goes inside so you see that the medial space doesn't open up okay on the other hand uh, you have 
case with hinge abduction here, irregular femoral head with a lateral bump. And when you abduct, there is opening on the medial side. And this is known as the hinged abduction. So it's very important to differentiate between these two types where abduction is good and abduction occurs, but there is a hinge abduction. And this can be easily done on a X-ray in abduction. So whenever you have a sequelae of Perthes disease, you need to differentiate between the two types because the treatment is going to be completely different. If you have a sequelae like this, where you are able to abduct and the medial space doesn't increase, all you have to do is cover the large femoral head by either a femoral or a estabular procedure or a combined procedure. And when you have this condition, when there is a hinge abduction because of irregular femoral head, you have to address that problem. And there are many ways to address that problem, such as uh, doing a valgus osteotomy or a reshaping of the femoral head or uh, a shelf procedure to, to take care of that. So we'll just go through some cases uh, so that I can explain this very simple concept. Uh, so this is a 10 year old child. Uh, this is uh, going into now stage three because you have lateral ossification and the femoral head is becoming more, more dense and there is coxa magna. And when you take an X-ray in abduction, uh, you can see that the femoral head gets contained. Now, what should I do for this case? Uh, how many of you feel that a femoral osteotomy, a varus osteotomy will contain this hip? How many of you feel that uh, that's not a good idea, but uh, we should do rather uh, an acetabular procedure for that? So just type in again in your chat box and let me know uh, what are your views. Um, So meanwhile, Maureen has a question that would it be possible to check always when child is awake uh, that may be spasm on attempted abduction. So most of the time in three and four perthes, you know, there is no active inflammation. And in those cases, you are, you are it's possible to abduct. If it's not possible to abduct, I will do a adductor release under anesthesia and do an arthrogram and check for this. So that's the answer to Maureen's question. So. Uh, anyone, uh, any suggestions for this? So, Vignesh is saying 10 year old estabular procedure is better. Gaurav Gupta, combined varus ostomy and estabular procedure. What are symptoms in coxa magna? There may not be any symptoms. Uh, this child just had a limb because of trochanteric overgrowth and short neck. But if you leave it alone, uh, this hip is not going to do well. So, this becomes Toolberg type 3. But, uh, you know, you, you want this hip to do better. Shelf procedure. So various procedures people are talking about. And I'll tell you uh, what I'm going to deal with this. So this is the amount of uh, abduction required. And if you do a varus osteotomy in this position, you'll have trochanter going very high. And this child will have a permanent lurch, which is not going to resolve very well. So there is already a virus and you don't want to give further virus in this case. So this is how it differs from treating patients in stage uh, 1B or 2A and 2B because there is no virus yet developed in those patients. And uh, uh, what we really also want to take care of if there is virus, there will be also limb length discrepancy. So the treatment in this case, if you don't do anything, you know, somebody said if there are no symptoms and if you don't do anything, what happens with coxa magna is every time you abduct the labrum and the lateral estabular edge it will hit on the femoral head. And this uh, will cause point pressure and early degeneration, not only on femoral side, but also on the estabular side. And uh, that's why you need to create this extra support, which can be done either with a shelf or KRD's procedure, or you can do a triple innominate osteotomy by sort of a point against doing a, a redirectional procedure is this not a spherical head. And that's why by doing a triple innominate osteotomy, you are not going to get a perfect congruency in the sense if you provide a lateral coverage, there'll be some point pressure medially. And though some people practice that, I don't feel that is a, the most correct procedure. You have to have a salvage procedure, either Chiari or a shelf. And between two, shelf procedure is something which I prefer. And what it does is, uh, even if you abduct that hip, uh, you know now there'll be a extra protection for the femoral head because of capsular interposition 
between the bony bony shelf which has been created so there is no true escapulum here but you have a capsular interposition so this is how this procedure is done you take the patient in supine position and the incision uh, below the iliac crest and uh, after uh, using your uh, periosteal elevator and uh, exposing the iliac crest on the lateral side you will insert this wire and it's important that this wire is inserted at 15 degrees from the horizontal the reason is that's the direction you want your shelf to be and once you expose uh, you can see the intra photo here you drill multiple holes in a curvy linear fashion uh, parallel to the surface of the femoral head into the uh, supra estabular uh, area and then you join these holes with a ronger and create a slot so this is the slot which is created and then you take bone graft from the iliac crest and fill in in the slot with the cortical portion uh, you know being down uh, then you secure this with a rectus the rectus tendon is sutured over this to secure this and then you can put multiple bone grafts what i prefer is not just depend on the rectus tendon but put a plate uh, sort of a supported shelf here where uh, you maintain this inclination of the shelf so this is the recon plate uh, which acts as a buffer plate and that's the post op picture you can see the shelf being put covering the femoral head and it's at 15 degrees uh, uh, which so that it follows the shape of the femoral head and at the same time we have done trochanteric epiphysiotesis to prevent overgrowth of the trochanter and that's uh, uh, post op x ray on some early follow up you can see that the femoral head is completely covered so that's a treatment uh, i would do in a sequelae when there is coxa magna without any hinge abduction so when you have this hinge abduction the treatment choices are different and taral taral you before do... you proceed yeah. uh, sham had yeah. a point to erase yes. sham please yes. go ahead yeah yeah Hey Dara, good to uh, see you after a long time. Pleasure. So when the so the typical X-ray done to decide whether you want to do a triple or a redirectional acetabular osteotomy is an abduction internal rotation view, which right. mimics the position of the hip after the osteotomy. So right. so when you said that you would not do a triple in this case or would not do a redirectional osteotomy. despite the fact that you had a congruent you know position of the head in abduction and internal rotation that that was a little confusing to me um can you elaborate on that a little bit right right the, the reason i do it is when you do a triple inomenal ostomy you are moving the head uh, moving the estabulum at the center of the estabulum so uh, i'll just go back to this this x ray and i showed that so this seems congruent the, the only problem is here i'll try to yeah okay let's see if this is working okay so this is the estabulum and when you redirect the redirection occurs at the center of the estabulum however the problem is when you have an oblong head uh the center here is not at the center of the femur center of the estabulum and femoral head they don't coincide so i'll show this again uh, so center of the femoral head is here where the center of the estabulum is here and uh, because of that reason uh, i feel though people do a uh, redirection osteotomy uh, but so we did some simulation of this even using a 3d software and uh, uh, sort of Uh, in a model of um, coxa magna with perthes and we found that though it looks good on the x ray actually actually when you move the the redirectional estabulum after a triple osteotomy there is a echo on the second there is echo is somebody uh, i'll do that uh, i'll do that okay so it doesn't match so so that's that is what i thought about sham what is you know it, uh that, that was my point of view so that's why i feel shelf shelf uh creates a uh, um, estabulum to match the shape of the femoral head um and then that would work better and 
this is the locking plate right uh, tarul this is a locking comp- locking uh, uh, recon plate yeah how is it easy to put this plate or sometimes you don't have hold on the thin ilium or do you face any oh, yeah. you know, after taking the bone graft is it difficult to put this plate or it's no, not no 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 because not difficult because of the direction of the screw so you can see one of the screws which i have shown here actually goes into the the substance of hilum and it has a good hold it holds well okay please move Go only away. thing you should never never remove this plate because the bone would have grown over the plate and uh, uh-huh. you really don't remove it okay so this is a case now uh, this is uh, herring 3 uh, you know this is what uh, it is described in possibility as wafer thin femoral head uh, and here you have a hinge abduction so you know the, there is lateral outflow and lateral bump and when you do an arthrogram you realize the femoral head is actually much larger than what it appears to be with a very big lateral bump and uh, this bump causes uh, on abduction the medial space to increase so here uh, the arthrogram demonstrates that and in this case uh, again uh, Uh, containment procedure will not work and you have to do something uh, to to gain range of movement because it's not good to have this situation you know this, this creates a painful hip and the two options here are to do a, to get this bad area of the head out of the femoral head so when you have a large head remaining with a lateral bump you know the the choice of option with a shortening uh, a valgus osteotomy is a good option so you know you can use uh, either a, a proximal femoral plate or a blade plate and do this procedure so the way i do it is get the femoral the the femur in maximum adduction and get the bump out on table and in that position uh, you do the osteotomy and get the staff straight so that you get a neck shaft angle of 140 or 150 degrees so advantage of this procedure is that it gets the bad part of the head out and um uh, increases the range of abduction and stops the pain it brings down the trochanter and it improves the lurch it also adds to length of the leg at the same time but the problem with this procedure is it increases the joint load and the second is that if the remaining femoral head is small you know it will be unstable uh, and uh, sometimes you can get subluxation of the femoral head after this procedure so it's very important to plan this well by taking an x ray in full adduction uh you know if you are going to plan this procedure so uh, this is uh, another child with a similar issue uh, and you can see on the x ray there is a lateral bump and also a significant anterior bump almost looks like an osteochondroma in this child but this is a sequel of prothesis and this child had severe restriction of movements um not only restriction of abduction but also restriction of flexion and uh, because of that uh, we what we plan to do in this child was uh, remove this bumps through an open approach and transfer the trochanter to relatively lengthen the neck so this is a procedure uh, again uh, you are not just reshaping the femoral head you are dealing with the head but also with some of the biomechanics here and uh, the mri here shows the the lateral bump and the anterior bump. you know you can see here the anterior bump uh, which was restricting flexion so on clinical evaluation uh, and on mri uh, and imaging the decision was here to to reshape the femoral head and the choice of approach here was a safe surgical dislocation approach of gans so that was the planning on x ray to not only to remove this bump but to distally transfer the trochanter and uh, you take the patient lateral approach uh, osteotomize the trochanter and then expose the femoral head and after removing the bump uh, this was the picture the anterior and the lateral bumps were removed there is a chance of heterotrophic ossification in these cases and the reformation of the bump so you know you cover these areas with with a bone wax and give endomethacin post operatively and uh, then distalize the trochanter so that the gluteus medius is tight and almost uh, you know after the surgery you should have around 10 to 15 degrees of abduction contracture on table you know that's the key to uh, get a good 
sort of a gate in these patients. So that's uh, the patient uh, after the surgery. You can see the femoral head actually become very small and you do need to protect them in a brace for around three to four weeks before you start mobilizing them. And uh, some of these patients, in addition, uh, you may require a shelf procedure or a redirectional osteotomy if you feel that uh, it's it's uh, uh, there is a component of coxa magna uh, along with the bum. That, uh, sometimes you have a combination there. And uh, this patient, uh, you can see after the surgery, at least in around two years follow-up, he did have good range of movement, maintained it well, and uh, is doing fine. He has some shortening, uh, but which is compensated with a shoe raise. So that's the you know paper uh, uh, which talks about relative neck shortening, uh, relative neck lengthening, uh, which improves the pain and hip function uh, for a proximal femoral deformity following uh, Perthes disease, which also have a high riding trochant. And that's the picture from the paper. Uh, which shows this uh, procedure similar to what I have described. So another case here, this is an extreme of uh, sequelae where you have what is known as a dumbbell shaped uh, femoral head. And uh, what you get here is, uh, you know, two sort of uh, mountains or the hills and a valley in between. And that's how these uh, moments are taking place here. And uh, if you do a head reduct, uh, you know, a kilectomy or a osteochondroplasty in this patient, you will be left with a very small uh, femoral head. And, uh, you know, if you excise everything, you, you don't have a functional, so if you excise all this part, you have hardly any femoral head remaining here. So that's not a good sort of solution here. Uh, so we ventured into doing something else here and I'll explain to you. So this is a CT and MR as preparatory for the procedure. And what we did again, uh, lateral position, Gans's approach to do osteotomy of the trochanter and then uh, make the retinocular flaps and then dislocate the femoral head here. The, here you have to be very careful that the medial as well as Lateral. All the flaps have to be very carefully designed because uh, the procedure here was femoral head reduction. So what you're going to do here is get rid of the area in between. And you can see there is a bad cartilage here. The cartilage here, hardly any cartilage existing here. Whereas uh, if you see the, the lateral part of the femoral head and the medial part, the cartilage seems to be good. So can this be converted into a spherical femoral head? And that's by a procedure called femoral head reduction. So what you do is you excise the part of the femoral head um, and wedge, take a wedge out, out. And medially you have a, a metaphyseal beak and the blood supply which you preserve. And then close this femoral head and fix this with uh, headless screws to convert this uh, saddle shaped femoral head into a sphere. And again, uh, you need to protect this in a spica or a femoral brace for a long time. And uh, uh, this is a post-op picture of this child. And uh, again, in a, around one and a half year follow-up, he has good range of movement. His pain has gone uh, and he's able to walk better. We really don't know what is long-term sort of a follow-up of this procedure. You know, what's going to happen to the cartilage is femoral head uh, cartilage going to degenerate and have arthritis, but at least the child, we've been able to salvage this uh, over early follow. -up. So, uh, sequelae of femoral uh, fem uh, Perthes disease are varied, and uh, you know there are multiple problems, and that's why there are multiple procedures uh, which you adopt in different situations uh, in order to address those issues. So some of the concepts of uh, containable head and non-containable head, I have demonstrated in these examples, and I hope uh, you know these will be useful to the fellows uh, and the young consultants who are attending this meeting. So Maureen, uh, yeah, that's yeah. my talk, and then we can go through question answers and the fellows cases after. Yeah, Gaurav, please. Uh, so Prasad is also here to. 
to communicate and to uh, uh, I help in discussion. Yeah. Hi, Prasad. Good morning. So, Gaurav, can you take questions? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, one question by Dr. Morley. Can we wait for uh, relieving spasm and edema like we do for virus derotation osteotomy or we can go right away to do a valgus osteotomy? So this, uh, the hinge abduction or all this impingement, they all have long-standing inflammation and sometimes they are pain, painful every time they come back. So the, the method is like in, when you plan to do video in stage one and two, you need to wait for spasm or inflammation to settle down. I think that does not apply here, right, Tarun? Yeah, yeah because you are not, uh, so of course you would, very rarely I have seen a uh, range of moments uh, and uh, my typical choice for doing a valgus osteotomy again would be a patient when you clinically examine has you know at least uh, 30 degrees of rotation if there is an anterior hinge plus anterior bump and a lateral bump a valgus osteotomy alone is not going to work because that child will have restriction of flexion so a child who has hinge abduction with good rotation will be a candidate for a valgus osteotomy. And those are the children uh, or young adults, you know, you really don't have uh, spasm or in inflammation most of the time, as happens in acute birth. Uh, any, any experience, Prasad, you want to add to that? Uh, or anyone else? Yeah, but if there is pain, then I would, you know, maybe wait for some time, uh, give traction, relieve the pain, and then do a valgus osteotomy. Hi, so sorry guys, I mean, on and off. Haral? Yeah. There is an osteotomy, right? You can do flexion and valgus. There's an anterior bump and a lateral bump, as uh, I think Dr. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Joseph uh, talks about. Right. Right? So you can, so yeah, you can take the anterior bump also away. No, no, you can leave the bump. But not even open the joint and do a flexion mm -hmm. so that you can improve uh, yes. just like no, no, you, yeah, bump. yeah. So you flexion can the bump. yes, you can do but a posterior not. angulation. Yes, you you can. The problem yeah. is that leads to restriction of extension and a very bad case. So we did it in one of the cases and then realized that the child actually develops uh, a flexion deformity because you know the you don't have hyper extension to compensate. And if there is a big anterior bump in order to create a posterior angulation and a flexion osteotomy, the right. gait of the child may, may suffer sometimes. Now, with your valgus osteotomy... So, now, with, you, with, with, with... Right. What, what you're putting uh, for weight bearing... So, in that case, it... it I, is the fovea. Keep that in mind. Yes. You're not opening the yes. joint, you're just doing valgus. Right. So, you're trading one range to a, for another range. Absolutely. So, you're not really making the head wrong. Right. The next question was Taral or Prasad, what is That's the long term no, so, outcome of this uh, valgus osteotomy? Because we are making it more subluxated or the more head is out the confines of estabulum than it was before. So we have not seen many valgus osteotomy. So what is in long, long term outcome? So as Prasad very rightly said, you know, valgus osteotomy is not an ideal procedure. You know, in, in a very selected group of patients, you would do that. And uh, you are trading off on one hand, being pain-free, little elongation of the, of the limb, and uh, improving the lurch with increasing load. Okay, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, because you are having uh, a fovea again, you know, come, come, uh, coming into the weight bearing area so the planning is very important and if you have if you have to give so much of adduction that fovea actually goes into the weight bearing area you will not do all the cost on so you'll reserve it for select group of patient where there is a small bump hinge abduction and there is shortening with good rotations then valgus osteotomy will work the one more question was can can the hip dislocate post valgus osteotomy uh, I mean, uh, not post valgus, but uh, head reduction. You know, it it can uh, all of these procedures 
make her head unstable. The valgus ostomy subluxates the femoral head, and all head reduction procedure, whether it's a osteochondroplasty or uh, or a head to protect it till the time capsule tightening. In both these procedures, I you know uh, recommended that we must protect the head for a long time. Right. So let's uh, Gaurav, please take yeah. the cases now. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start with Sheenam's case first. So Tarul and Prasad and Sham, these are some situations. Now we have not operated on most of them, but there are some situations where uh, we were puzzled. So we would like to present those one by one and you can tell us what would have been done for them. Yeah, Sheenam, proceed with the uh, presentation. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, today we will discuss three cases. Uh, let's start. A nine years old male uh, came to us with right groin pain. Uh, it was his first episode. X-ray was X-ray looks normal. At nine, at nine and a half years, uh, it, there was full range of motion at hip. So uh, we uh, there was crescent sign on the X-ray. We advised uh, observation. Now, let us ask a question. Can you go to that slide, Sheenam, please? Yeah. So, uh, this is nine and a half years old. Now, the, at this mm -hmm. moment, the patient has not come to us. These are the previous x-rays. Taral. So, this Fenton's arc is intact. Rotations are full. And child's age is a bit advanced for uh, this, you know, considering VDRO. So now the still the orthopedic surgeon who was treating kept it conservatively and go back go to the next slide, Sheenam, please. Uh, yeah. So Molin at this stage, uh, yeah, in a nine and a half year old child, uh, with that X-ray, you no, know, I would have treated yeah. this with a containment procedure. That is what um, the Manipal experience tells us about. Yeah. Go back Should to the been... previous X-ray, please. Previous. X yeah. Previous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Taral, so please I, come I, again. Yeah, so, so at this stage, uh, if you see, this is almost going into herring B and a lateral, you see a collapse. So, you know, this would be a, an indication for a containment procedure at this right. age. Yeah, yeah. Now, for at Indian this stage. age, at nine and a half years, would you still do video, video or you do something else? What is the cutoff of uh, video in your practice? Yeah, so, so unlike the Western recommendations, because the perthes in Indian children appears at a later age group, you know, the, the recommendations also have been modified. So that in uh, Benjamin's paper, you can see up to almost 11 years they have done uh, a virus osteotomy for a perthes disease. After 11, they classified it as uh, adolescent onset. Yeah. So, so agree that at this point, the surgeon could have done video, right? So now let's go to the next um, X-ray, Sheenam. So probably at this juncture, uh, patient came to us. Gaurav, you have to say some point. Gaurav, please yeah, go I, ahead. I have a question. What if the age of the child would have been like less than five years, four years or something with the previous X-ray? Shall we go for a virus at that age also or we can... No, 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 no. No, you don't go. So the recommendation in children below six years is that unless there is extrusion, you don't operate. Yeah, but you do keep those children non-weight bearing uh, according to the current recommendations from um, uh, Eric came uh, Eric came in. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Thank you. So when during my fellowship at Lexi Kids, this Dr. John Wedge used to say when Shenton's arc is intact with good rotation, at any age, you can wait. But what I see is if, even though the rotation and Shenton's arc is intact, as the disease progress, that may go bad. 
So, Taral, is it right that if the child presents after six years with a, uh, with a maintained shantans and uh, uh, perseids, we should consider VDO, even though they have uh, they are, they do not have any rotational restriction? What do you suggest? So this is a very tricky question, like your tricky cases, this is a tricky question. The, the issue is, uh, we don't know if all of these heads are going to go bad. Yeah. But the, by the time we know that this head is going bad, it is late. Going, it is late. And uh, with that respect, you know, uh, the Manipal group said that we don't want any head to go bad. We'll do virus derotation on every patient. Now, in that process, you will end up doing a surgery for some of the patients who would have otherwise also done that. And you would, even after doing VDRO, there are some patients who don't do well. You know, almost 30% of the patients after doing VDRO don't still go into Stuhlberg 1 or 2 or 3. That, that, that's even their literature. Which means your surgery has helped only 40% of patients, actually. 30% mm. which would have done well on their own and 30% which we, we are not going to benefit at. even after VDRO, you're not, you not helping. But still the philosophy is that ben to benefit those 40%, you are doing surgery on 100%. And, and that's, that is the recommendation. And, and you would still do that. The issue is we still don't know how to make a choice because there is no investigation. There are now attempts being done on, you know, uh, MRI perfusion scans, and then we are also doing few of them. Uh, the, the entire Prothy study group is trying to see by doing a perfusion scan, can you differentiate early between heads which are going to do well, and how to mm. differentiate is they do a perfusion scan, and yeah. there is a special software available. So, Molin, at least in every city, one MRI yeah. center you should ask to purchase that software. Right, where they can give you a, a, a sort of a map of the right. perfusion percentages, and if the perfusion is more than fifty percent, and good mm. perfusion is there in the lateral column, then you can conserve those. And, and Hitesh, those which Hitesh are also those, mentioned this last time, they do MRI. Yes. All the MRIs are yes. perfusion MRIs. Yeah, so you don't these. need us. You don't need to change your MRI machine. You just, just the software. People will huh? need to software. Okay. And with increasing cases of AV and with with uh, you know viral infections, uh, the, the number of indications for doing perfusion scans will increase. So you, you should have someone to do that. Fine. Now, Taral, now this child has come at ten years to us, and what procedure you would consider at this age? Now, so I, there I is, see now the shantans see... arc is broken. Broken. The disease broken. has been advanced. Yeah. yeah, you can see metaphyseal cysts. You know, for the yeah. fellows, you can see more reactive changes, metaphyseal cysts, the metaphyseal is widened. So, you know, uh, on the lateral x-ray, uh, you see that there is also uh, 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 inferior metaphyseal cysts. And, and right. these all tell you that uh, the head is mushrooming out. And mm. uh, still, uh, this is not too late in the sense you would still do a, uh, if the range of movement is good, you would still sort of uh, do a femoral osteotomy to salvage this this head right uh, what about uh, sham and uh, um, prasad prasad uh, would you like to you know uh, put a would you like to do a femoral osteotomy or how else would you manage this so this is sham so i think i think the femoral osteotomy has several advantages in addition to just uh, redirecting the head i actually I think it short circuits the whole process of revascularization, so it speeds that up. So the whole, all the four, all the stages of perthes are sped up by a femoral procedure. I think. So my choice, my vote would also be a femoral procedure, but I tend to get abduction internal rotation views rather than frog lateral views. In addition, you know, in addition to frog lateral views, because that gives you a better picture of whether the head is actually being contained. Or yeah. is it hinging? All of that. Right. Now, you, you see that uh, for frog, I think there's about 40 degree abduction and external rotation. So, this was not hinging, I can tell you that. Um, well contained. And so, femoral procedure would be your choice. Gaurav says, what stage of disease this is in? 
So this is early... going no no going from two B to three A. So you know Benjamin says that moment you start seeing metaphysical cysts and uh, you know lateral ossification, it means that now it is going into uh, reossification stage. Okay. So this is a hard head, and because it's a hard head, it has lesser time for remodeling. So we will do a femoral derotation ostomy, knowing that we are little late. So, Shinam, can you go back one slide? Yeah, now, now proceed. So, this was probably the crescent sign and probably that stage 1B at nine and a half years. Yes. Go one, please proceed a slide, Shinam. Aage jau. Are baba, piche. I just want to see what stages are going on. We have not seen No, no. Crescent fragmentation sign is phase. two A. Crescent sign is two A. Moment two you a. have crescent sign, Aage badho, it is becomes two a. two a. Two A. So this is Moment two you a. see a crescent sign, it becomes two A. Moment you have two, uh, sort of a, uh, more than one or more than two uh, fragmentations, Fishers, then yeah. it becomes two B. Two B. So and these are that? sort of classifications. See, it's, yeah. it's, it's so never... Uh, that's, that's, that's all a, classification a, 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 have their limitations, and that's why there's all uh, at risk signs. But here, here you don't see any attempt at revascularization. See, there is no metaphysical cyst. There is no lateral ossification. So, moment you see lateral ossification or metaphysical cyst, it it crosses into three A. That's okay. it. Yeah. Now move ahead one slide. Okay. So you say this is early healing, right? Yeah, so, so you will have metaphysical widening and the cysts only as an attempt of revascularization. More blood so, is, is being thrown at the periphery to form more bone. So that is what it means. So now according to Benjamin Joseph's theory, once it has entered into 3A, we, can, we do not have any control on the outcome of the disease. And then there are a lot of head at risk, risk signs even though we want to operate upon them, right? Uh, this is what we we learned. Yeah, he last calls week. this as head, head, head already buggered up signs. Yeah, so yeah, it means yeah. that head is already you lost control. Yes, yeah. Right. Let's go ahead. Yeah. So we suggested surgery. Patient uh, did not agree and came after nine months. Next slide, please. And this is now there is restriction of motion more than before. So now, uh, shall we do this femoral osteotomy or what, what can be done? What would be the good management? Or we should wait for the disease to heal and come back. Gaurav, no. Taral? Yeah, yeah, go back. I'm just uh, studying these x-rays. Ah. So here I, I would, you know, uh, put the child through range of movement exercises and then wait and see. If it extrudes and see if you can see, I, if I can point out that lateral ossification is taking place, this yes. moral head is going to extrude. Yes. And if it has restriction of movement, my choice would be to do a shelf process in this patient right. rather than doing a femoral process. I would like to okay. know, you know, sort of uh, opinion from Sham and uh, Prasad also as to what they would do at this stage. Or oh, Sham, you would do adductor tenotomy in cast at this stage or... Uh... There is because there is <laughs> limited abduction and there might be some uh, hinging also at this stage, as Taral said. So I think it's hard to kind of know without actually doing an arthrogram, an examination under anesthesia, doing tenotomies. There's, you know, so, so I had, I don't have x-rays to show you, but there's a small set of patients who look like they will hinge initially and as the inflammation and the spasm settles down, the head will drop down into the acetabulum. So this Cincinnati, uh, not Cincinnati, I'm sorry, Akron, Ohio, or suppose it's Cincinnati, I forget. They should do a fairly aggressive procedure of inferior capsulotomy and things like that to help the head drop down, you know? So for me, I would base my treatment on what the exam under anesthesia would be and with an arthrogram and see if that, you know, and, and, and to Tarot's point, anytime you see that lateral, you know, ossification, it's just, it says that there is cartilage that's unossified that's been pushed out of the socket there. 
That's what it tells you. So the likelihood of abdu hinged abduction is fairly high, but still I would like to see how it is. And if it is hinging, then I wouldn't do anything to it. I would probably wait, come back and do a shelf. Or if it is not hinging, I would proceed with the varus osteotomy of the, of the femur. Yeah, so like we also uh, thought the same. We waited and see and gave a bit of traction and anti-inflammatories. In, and patient has not turned up. So, like, uh, but I think that the idea would be to wait at this point and let the disease heal. And uh, Prasad would do these, uh, or would suggest that to do these uh, salvage operations later or bumpectomy or something. Right, Taral, is that the right plan? Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, in this patient, uh, you know, some more information as sham shit can be obtained for, by doing an arthrogram or an MR. Yeah, arthrogram yeah. has an advantage that it's a dynamic investigation. But for yeah. arthrogram, you need to put the child through child anesthesia. Under anesthesia. So what, yeah, yeah. So what I would do is, uh, you know, I'm already seeing a lateral ossification. And uh, there are papers uh, which are pro-shelf. There are pro-shelf papers which suggests that doing an early shelf, like an early osteotomy, uh, you know, can help this head to remain spherical and, you know, uh, uh, improve, have a good range of movement and good outcome. So I'll share these, some of these papers with you. Yeah. And with that, if I'm going to plan a shelf, I will do arthrogram at the same time, rather than, you know, doing adductor release arthrogram right now and then doing a shelf procedure at a later date. Right. Fine. So let's go to the next situation, Chinam. Right. So again, this was uh, nine or nine and a half. Came with a heel disease with, uh, from a, a very remote area where it was conserved or probably neglected. Now pain is there for three years and have restricted motion. And we can see all the things which Taral mentioned in his talk, coxa magna, coxa breva, bit of uncoverage. So Taral, how would you deal with this? So again, I would take an X-ray in abduction to know whether there is, it is hinging or not hinging. It appears that this is going to Stuhlberg 3 and, and it would, uh, you know, a good abduction would be possible. Here the abduction gets restricted because of hyaluronic trochanter. Right. There is a extra articular impingement in many of these patients. Yeah. Um, so my choice of procedure after doing that would be to do a shelf and at the same time do a, a trochanteric uh, distalization. Uh, shift, distalization, yes. Now, the only thing is that many of the children also could be having shortening. So, you know, if, if those people who are heroic, you know, would do much more but a shelf and a trochanteric uh, transfer, I think, would, would improve this child's symptoms and the gait. Yeah, Sham or Prasad, uh, would you differ in this or you would be this of similar opinion? Now, this is a healed think, Parthis. Yeah, I don't know if Prasad is still on the phone. I think he may have left. But... Um, no, I'm back. Oh, you're back. Okay, okay, you're back. Yeah, so, Prasad, what, what yeah. would be your choice in this case? See, any aspherical head is not good for uh, hip function long term. So I like to make it round. I see a nice, decent uh, lateral pillar. The MR confirms that. Intrap exam also confirms that this lateral pillar healthy. This is a good case for me to make it round by a head reduction osteotomy. Probably add a little bit of establer uh, containment just because head reduction can be unstable. One question I want to answer is valgus making, unstable, making things unstable. The capsule is intact. You won't see a dislocation. If you do an extra articular osteotomy, but valgus does make it more unstable in general. So that's the one of the reasons not to do valgus when the hip is already subluxated. There's a bump on the outside, and then you do further valgus. So with head reduction, you always should think about hypercontainment. Do something to make sure that uh, head won't dislocate easily. Once you do SSD, every hip is uh, at risk for dislocation. So this was uh, before this. Before Prasad came to India, I think no, I no, did no. It so in... one more thing, Maulin. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. Prasad, just one sort of uh, you know point of view here. Here you see coxa magna in AP view as well as lateral. 
so when you do a head reduction uh, you would do you, you would improve it in a ap view but what about the lateral view you know there is a enlargement of the head and sort of a mushrooming also on a lateral view so ideally a head reduction procedure has to you know how we slice a, a, a fruit you know it, it has to be in both the axis chop it at right angle to each other and reduce the head but but really we can't do that so how would you manage that head reduction will take care of the anterior bump taral head reduction take is from front to back cut right you see it on ap but you're cutting from front to back yes. so you can modify it based on uh, where the bump is intra intraoperatively or preoperatively on a ct scan you can model it you don't, don't need to be parallel cuts but you take a wedge like you did so a lot of right. lot of options Yeah. So, but, but it it will it will be uniplanar. You can't do it three sixty degrees. You can't shrink the head all around with with head reduction. No, you can do it from front to back. In one of the places. You do yeah. parallel cuts or you do anterior yes. wedge, right? It all depends yeah. on where the cartilage is and what you need to achieve at the end. Right. Okay. So I'll show you what uh, what I did at that. I think I operated this case in twenty fifteen or something. Sinam, go ahead. One slide. so i tried to do kri and my cut of kri slope slope of kri was was not right although i intend to do that so it became more horizontal so i added a shelf to took a graph from crest and uh, had to fix with multiple wires but i did not distalize the trochanter and somehow this child did well for many years and as robert salter says the follow up is the main culprit so before a year he came with impingement and pain and i don't know whether prasad i uh, did i make a consult with you of this patient or not i i don't think you you have met this patient but he is still symptomatic and we have to do something for him so my experience of this surgery for this um, child was not very good of i mean he has got into medical school now maybe next time when prasad or taral or sham comes to amdavad i'll bring him back and uh, i'll offer care uh, forward to you yeah so do you have a follow up x ray uh, we had but unfortunately i uh, we could not put it here i have so i'll i'll send you the series of x rays okay yeah, the mole no you. harm done no harm done everything can be you didn't do anything that's irreversible the shelf uh, overcovered a little bit but you can still do uh, the femoral procedure and yeah. excise the shelf if needed i so, think you can no, you no might uh, this child would need this relative neck lengthening and uh, something now better imaging and i i have removed uh, this some wires some wires are still there fine so we'll we'll share this uh, latest x ray with you Let's go to the next situation, Shinam. Hey, Molin, quick question yes. for Prasad yes. on that case. Shinam, आगे जाओ यार. हाँ, please, Sham. Hey, Prasad, when yes, would you yeah. ever consider doing a combination of a valgus and a triple in a big head? If it's more congruous in valgus, there's healthy. See, what's important is you need to get the cartilage right. So anytime we do valgus, I'm worried that the medial cartilage may not be healthy. If you tell me that the medial cartilage is better than the superior cartilage that I have, I'll do a valgus anytime. Yeah, no, no. But the concern with valgus is, you know, lateral subluxation and so on. So oftentimes you find that a combination. I mean, this is again. I'm talking from the San Diego guys who are very big on doing valguses and triples together for for birthdays to help cover the head well. at the same time minimize the risk of lateral subluxation or instability you know no again i'm i'm not saying that you can do see when you do valgus there's instability so you make sure that you do something on the establer side to contain the head better but when you do that with valgus are you sure that the medial cartilage is better are they opening and looking at it that that's my concern i see okay fine so now this is the x ray picture or mri picture we see in some kids their range of motion is not bad they they don't have much pain 
they they have kind of situation osteochondritis of the central part or which has not fused with the other in the process of healing should we do something for this or we can just wait and watch taral and prasad and yeah so there is a osteochondral fragment here but in perthis uh, you know it, it's it's still attached and uh, uh, so only one patient uh, you know which we have reported uh, this this we had a detached fragment which we had to take out arthroscopically this was many years back when i was at ke that's been published in journal of arthroscopy but uh, you know after that I, most of these patients you would wait and watch and you know no surgical procedure either drilling or fixing this is required for us to okay. for such a you know it's a radiological thing and mri would confirm that the cartilage over this is intact right but prasad yeah. uh, or sham you know have you seen many of these and uh, how would you manage that i have in fact i have only a couple in my experience and i have done exactly what you did mr showed that the articular cartilage was intact and i just followed them that's all i did so for me it depends on where the ocd is if the ocd is in the weight bearing area and there are symptoms then i would definitely address it right the options are to fix it and right? make it heal or move it out of the way you, you can unload it you have good lateral pillar move that ocd away from the weight bearing area or if it's right in the weight bearing area you can repair or uh, graft it those are the options symptoms and is it in the weight bearing area right fine do we have any other uh, shinam or we are done with it yes sir we are done okay so and uh, gorav bansi yeah. had some uh... yeah bansi has a case i'm just screen sharing you know you should stop sharing your screen probably so is it visible to uh, everyone yeah 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 so this is banchi's case he says that the x rays are it's a late onset perthis the x rays are static from past 8 9 months child is walking with minimal painless limp but he is unable to run or sit cross legged or kick due to pain and on examination there is restricted uh, abduction and flexion internal rotation are restricted what can be offered at this stage to this child so this needs is further imaging mri to see how is the cartilage and uh, uh, this child uh, you know i would offer uh, if, if uh, a safe surgical dislocation and and doing what is necessary after seeing the head The choice between osteochondroplasty and femoral hip reduction. It's very difficult sometimes from MRI to even uh, you know fully understand what is happening inside. But you know, if some good cartilage is required on MRI to to offer this child uh, the fact. For the, yeah. So sorry the the fact that he is able to squat and walk painlessly uh, is it the evidence that cartilage is fine yeah so we need to see which areas cartilage is good and uh, and sometimes what happens is in in the area which is the valley if the cartilage is not good and if you do osteochondroplasty you lose even that cartilage so so if you need to see which area the cartilage is good in the weight bearing area if the cartilage is good then osteo uh, you know removing that bump is a good option but if the cartilage is not good, go in the weight bearing area then get rid of that bone and getting the 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 bump cartilage which is good inside will be a good option and that is by doing a femoral head reduction surgery see sometimes so, these children you know are they uh, uh, they don't complain of pain in fear of operation i have seen a few patients with prasad no when prasad this does this fir maneuver they would cry but they still say they i don't have any pain <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to get operated from this big surgeon you know but it's difficult to believe that this child is not having symptoms you know looking at this x ray and once they start deteriorating they start deteriorating so fast that we feel that we have missed the boat so sometimes this uh, 
asymptomatic patients are deceiving you know but here again there is the lateral bump i mean it it seems that it is not completely glued with the rest of the neck should we wait for some time and let it become a heal disease and come back and see or we should do something i i know that mri should be a good option to see what is going on prasad your take on this yes the head is pretty flat the joint space is healthy there is wide joint space right that what tells me that the cartilage is okay my concern is the lucency in the subcondral area big lucency so right now i won't be able to do a head reduction osteotomy if that's a, a unhealthy uh, uh, head part once it heals right that lucency goes away and the joint space still maintains reasonably wide then i need to get that lateral pillar under the roof whether it's a head reduction or an rnl and varus it all depends on how healthy and how how much the head can go in when you do a ssd do the ssd look at the head but after consolidation of the head i need to make sure that the lucency goes away and how the child should be treated in the interim non weight bearing or traction or 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 just let him walk around he is playing cricket he is playing cricket yeah i'll let him walk around but i'll ask him not to play cricket he may wear out his hip too soon so i'll ask him to be patient for about 6 months to 9 months see that the head consolidates non weight bearing is not that important but less activity sure helps yes sham so sir this hip looks like it's headed to a stolberg 4 at the very minimum the acetabulum has already changed shape so waiting on this and as he remodels even further what are the chances that you'll be able to keep you know that you'll be able to match the head to this acetabulum after the disease process has run its course well I, i don't want to sound like i can do everything but i can change the shape of the stabulum and the head to match it right now i'm not comfortable operating on the femoral head right the lucent the lucency scares me and he's trying no, to get close i don't, I don't I, I, i'm not disagreeing with you i'm just saying just it seems already that if you compare with the other other side this acetabulum is already getting a cylindrical you know kind of shape it's you know a lateral will probably show you around surface it's it's accommodating to that head so when i see this sort of stuff it makes me more in terms of deciding about a salvage procedure rather than something directly on the head yeah that's that's the so, board answer but i obviously want a round head to for the function so unless i make sure. the head round i don't think he'll do well so what yeah. are the comments on uh, just uh, osteoplasty and uh, rnl just remove the bump and get the trochanter no. down no no and if you take the bump off right move. now the is subluxated yeah. bad cartilage yeah. bearing away and you don't take out healthy cartilage so don't do a, a bump act me right now if you if you're brave enough go and do the head reduction right now if you if you're comfortable and you know what to do see what happens see once i open this the medial capsulotomy and all that that lateral bump may go in just with varus so rnl and varus may be all that's required but you won't be able to get that head down unless you do ssd and the medial release so sir do you think there's any role for a shelf in this operation in this space for me no for me no hmm. there's no see shelf just extends the capsular support but the head is flat it's not going to give him rotation the rotation is that he needs it will impinge even more right it will not make the impingement problem go away No, no. What I'm trying to think is, Prasad, you are you are an exceptional surgeon. There are certain things that everybody cannot do, you know. So when we're talking about, you know, thinking about how we can address this, not everybody can get to you. So I'm just trying to think for the average community pediatric orthopedic surgeon, what the choices would be. Shelf is the board answer, right? Uncovered head, incongruous. Put a shelf on, but yeah. what will shelf do here? Is it going to correct the subluxation is it going to no. correct the impingement no, no. it might protect that lateral column for a little bit longer that's all so you can take it down later if you want to with a second procedure when you go back in for the head can't you yes yes shelf is you, you never ever burn any bridges with the shelf that's why i started molin yeah. earlier also right that case you yeah. showed you didn't do any harm yeah. you can do it but i don't think it really serves any purpose got it right on so so Shum, yeah yeah so so again yeah, uh, yeah yeah so you know femoral head reduction is the most difficult and unpredictable 
surgeries or interventions you do with ssp approach uh, and 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 as prasad has always said that if you do you know almost 25 uh, slip femoral capital epiphysis alignment then you do one femoral neck osteotomy and when you do several of those you are qualified to do a femoral head reduction you know you you really need to be good at that uh, and as sham said for an average community pediatric orthopedic surgeon you know when and if you have to give a predictable procedure you know shelf with a trochanteric uh, transfer would at least symptomatically improve the better and and may add some years you know it, it may not be perfect procedure but in in want of any other option uh, you know that may work uh, for few years right so um, thanks taral for that uh, fantastic session i always felt that uh, an advanced perthes and cerebral palsy sessions when it ends up you know fellows or young pedi pods like me we are puzzled but you made it very clear that these are these are challenging cases but at least it opened the view of fellows that we can deal with them you know it's not always that you leave them you can give them better the main purpose is to give them longevity of their hip so it was a nice session thanks uh, prasad and sham for their your inputs there are many questions guys. taral uh, and gorav would ask you on your whatsapp we have finished the time we are overshooted by 10 minutes you can answer and we'll put it on the fellows group yeah. i will do that thanks yeah thank you very much take care thank and you sir we'll be so glad if you can bye. share your papers we can share those with fellows also goodbye thank you everyone and next week we'll meet with dr salil upasni who is going to talk about medial open reduction and that would be an interesting session also so we'll now have a couple of session on ddh and then we'll move on the cerebral palsy module thanks gorav thanks everyone bye